Of course, is that Edina is going to have to play either Hibbing or Mariner, which is our second game here tonight, <laughs> which is just as tight a game uh, as the first one. That's right, Bob. I think we could see the same type of game, and we might even see another overtime game. This one tonight is going to be really exciting because Hibbing's got great quickness. They've got to make sure they keep the puck off the boards. Mariner with uh, superior size and strength. If they can control the puck, if they can get it outside, they'll be able to free men in the middle in the slot area. And uh, it's going to be speed against muscle, but Mariner's not so slow, and Hibby's not so weak. Hibby's got some big, strong defensemen. It should be an outstanding matchup. So Edina wins it in sudden death. Now let's go downstairs to Ed Cairo. All right, and we're here with Wally Chapman, who scored the winning goal. Willard Eichela, uh, coach of Edina, and right back in at Ike after taking a year off. But uh, jeepers, I don't know whether to ask you if you're delighted or relieved. Well, it was a great game. We've been involved in a lot of uh, real classic high school hockey games over here, uh, and this was one of them. It was just a super hockey game, and we're just very fortunate. We've got a kid like uh, standing next to me, Wally Chapman, just right for that thing in there. He's got a big league shot, and he certainly uh, he gave us a big winner, didn't he? Wally, that was an outstanding goal. You really got some wood on it, but it, as you were saying earlier, it took a combination of people to get it done. Yeah, it's a great pass by Mike DeVoe, and all I had to do was shoot it. How did you feel going into the overtime? You, were you guys tired? Uh, I think we were a little tired, but we were confident. You know, we knew that we've been working real hard out practice after, you know, skating and stuff like that, and we knew that we were going to do it. You know, Coach Eichela has said all year that you guys have been a third-period team. You seem to have a lot of strength uh, and a lot of character at the end. Yeah, it's good coaching, and, you know, they really work as hard after practice, and it just shows towards the end of the game. Have good coaching going to come through against tomorrow? You could you run into one or the other of a couple of real heavyweights. Well, uh, we don't care who we play. Uh, we just keep uh, winning. I'll be happy. And uh, we, we've been having just a fine playoff uh, hockey ever since Section 6 started. And we just hope uh, we have one more game in our system and, and come out a winner. We have 13 seniors on this hockey team. And no, I'm going to get one great effort from those 13 seniors tomorrow. And, and uh, we don't care who we play. Uh, we have played Hibbing before, and we haven't met the uh, White Bear. But uh, they're both fine teams, or they wouldn't be there. And, and we don't care who we play. We're just happy to be in that final, and we're going to do a good job. How about you? Do you have any preferences? No, I don't care who we play. We're just going to give it all we got. How, what's your attitude lately, Wally? Uh, uh, having been in the tournament now for a couple of games, do you, do you become more confident as you go along and as you win, uh, feel more like uh, you can win it all? Yeah, I, you know, I don't. I feel a lot more confident being in it last year, and you know, we just have a great team, and we're going to see what we can do tomorrow. Okay. Well, thanks both, and uh, good luck tomorrow, and thanks for a, a very entertaining first game tonight. Bob, let's go back to you. Well, we're between games. We have another exciting game coming up for you, and we've got more between games in just a moment. The 1982 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament continues after station identification. Wendy's introduces a new salad. Oh, hey! Wendy's new taco salad. Oh, hey! Wendy's new taco salad. Fresh lettuce and tomatoes, shredded cheese, crunchy taco chips, all smothered in Wendy's homemade chili. It's more than a salad. It's a meal. And after your first delicious bite of our taco salad, we know you're going to say... Okay. Wendy's ain't no reason to go anyplace else. Ice machine. Bacon cheeseburger, medium rare, lettuce, tomato, onion, and ketchup. Big ice cold frosty Coca-Cola next to it. Look at that, huh? Perfectness. This is real refreshment, real big taste. Now see, if you were another cola, number two or number 29, you'd do taste tests and challenges and stuff and try and compare yourself to this, wouldn't you? Sure, don't shake your head now. You would too, you sneaky devil. See, that's why they call this the real thing. Yes, it is. Coca-Cola is it. Channel 5, KSTP-TV, St. Paul, Minneapolis. We now return to the St. Paul Civic Center Arena and the 1982 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. 
Back live at the Civic Center, awaiting the start of the Hibbing White Bear Mariner game, we have another special guest visiting us from, uh, of course, ABC Network, and he stars in a, in a great, great show. He's standing by live with Pam Ward of Twin Cities Today downstairs, Mr. Tom Hanks. Pam, take it away. Hi, I'm Pam Ward. I've got a real treat for you this evening. I'm sitting here talking to Tom Hanks, who plays Kip Wilson in ABC's hit comedy, Bosom Buddies. Welcome, if you can hear. Oh, are you number one? Well, I don't know. Adina is evidently one of these folks over here. What a great hockey game that was. A fabulous game. Uh, you jumped up and stood and cheered just like you had a kid brother on the team. Awful, awfully hard not to get into a game like that. I, I think the folks from Jefferson played a uh, day. You know, I'm sure they're disappointed, but they have nothing to be ashamed of. It's just a great, what was it? It was about an hour of hockey right there. Fast, oh furious. Yeah. Marvelous game. Marvelous game. Congratulations to the winners, and there was yeah. nothing wrong with the job Jefferson did out there. At the end of the game, I think everybody stood and kind of felt as sorry for Jefferson as they did for Edina. Oh, yeah, a lot of heart out there scoring the goal in the last minute there to go into the overtime. So I, I, a little ashamed to see it happen, but uh, hey, that's again the breaks of the game. It is. And a fine game it was. Hey, listen, you've got a fine show. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's not everybody who can run. Are you doing a takeoff on Some Like It Hot? Well, I... I, I don't know. I guess so. I guess that's kind of the hook that we started off with to begin with. Nice thing to get it going, and a lot of TV shows are based on movies. So I guess sort of, yeah, I guess we are. Not so much anymore, though. We've gotten away from all that nonsense. Yeah. And now it is, uh, we're, in our, we're in our second season on the show, and we've been able to grow a little bit, experiment, get away from some things, and yeah. try some other things. Yeah. Can you, you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> I what? can't hear you, but they yeah. probably can. It's electric down here. It's electric <laughs> here with a dyno. Hey, you've got a background as a Shakespearean actor. How'd you end up in comedy? Well, I was in New York auditioning for everything that was around, you know, trying to do all the things that any actor would do, uh, mm -hmm. opening myself up, hopefully, to all sorts of possibilities of employment. ABC was around, the television job came up, and there I was. Simple as What's that. harder to do, comedy or something like Shakespeare? Well, it's a much the same creative process, except uh, it's, I think it's a bit harder to pull off comedy because you know immediately if you're successful or not, because mm -hmm. they either laugh or they don't. And if they don't laugh, that means you stink out there, and nobody stinks but you, and so you have to deal with it. Are you working in front of a live audience? We look, Yeah, we have an audience there in the studio audience, yeah, yeah. Do you find that helps? At times, because you need that feedback in order to see how the scene is going, but other times it can be a hindrance because you're not really acting for the 300 people that are in the studio. You're acting for the little, little camera there, a little red, red light right on top of it. Sometimes you don't, you realize, you start communicating to the people and you lose the intimacy that you need for the camera. So it's kind of a science, really, is, is what it comes that down to. That is what it comes yeah. down to. Um, how do you maintain that level of funny from week to week to week? <laughs> uh, a lot of rest. <laughs> and when I go home, I go home. Is the best way. We, uh, we have a very good group of writers and, our, and uh, the other people on the show. Are, we're, we get along and it's still a very fun place to come in and go to work. So what we do is, is we just play. So we don't treat it like work, except when we have to. And that's only at the most direst of, uh, of the extremes. We just, we just play. We pretend. We have a good time. You've got a big chunk of what we think of as success. What are the best and the worst things about having, quote, made it? Unquote. <laughs> Let's have very large quotes around that. Uh, very large quotes. Uh, mostly it's the security for my family. I'm a, I'm a family man. I got a wife and a, a little boy and, and another one on the way. And just knowing that uh, I have enough uh, security both in the bank and in other places that will get me through for, a, for maybe the next six months. And before this, I had only enough to get me through the next two or three days. So <laughs> it's also nice to know that... Uh, we're going to be able to have sandwiches on the table for a while. Yeah. I think that's got to be the best part. Is it hard to keep up a family life? You've got a four-year-old boy. You have a child coming. Is that tough? Uh, no, not really, because I we haven't done it any other way. We've always my wife is an actress, and I've always been an actor. That's all we've been. So it's status quo. As a matter of fact, it's even better when we're working because we know that we're actually getting by in the careers that we've chosen. So I, I don't know anything else. If one yeah. of us had to go off and work nine to five, I think it would it would mess us all up and throw us all off kilter. So. Well, Tom, I'm glad you're here. It's obvious you're having fun. Oh, this is great. This is great. <laughs> My first visit to the Twin Cities and the electricity in this building is absolutely infectious. So I'm <laughs> Hold up your number one button again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Hanks from ABC's Blues and Buddies. Bob Bruce, back to you. Thank you, Pam. I see that the Hibbing Blue Jackets and White Bear Mariner now on the ice warming up for our second game for you tonight. We'll be back. We'll have more before that game. Let me remind you, this is the 1982 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. There's a hungry beast feeding in your house. It's your own furnace, and its appetite is costing you more and more every day. 
your Lennox dealer can tame your heating costs with a new Lennox Conservator Gas Furnace, the most efficient gas furnace yet. Dave Lennox here, suggesting you call Herb Cleave at Cleave Heating in Eden Prairie. Or call Ken Ketz at Four Season Air Specialists, the North and East St. Paul Suburban Lennox dealer. Welcome back. We have a special guest for, for you uh, downstairs with Ed Cairo, of course, the head coach of the University of Minnesota Gopher hockey team. Ed? Brad, uh, you're here as the University of Minnesota coach and, of course, as a scout. And after seeing that game today and having a choice of anybody on either of those te teams, I think you'd have a difficult time picking one guy. Well, I wish we had about 40 scholarships. Uh, <laughs> There's two great hockey teams out there, two very well-coached hockey teams, uh, some great individuals, and uh, we certainly feel fortunate at the university to be right here in the hockey hotbed of the United States, and uh, it's really exciting to watch it, Jim. I get really excited about it, and uh, it's a little bit different perspective than being behind the bench, but I, I get uh, very excited and very I feel very proud of the people out there. What uh, special needs do you have this year? Are you doing anything in terms of specific recruiting? Well, we need uh, you know a little bit in each position. Uh, you know, Ed, we lose eight people, eight very fine seniors led by our captain, Kevin Hartzell, and, uh, you know, we feel that there is a talent around and we can replace it. Uh, we don't have a lot of money this year. Uh, uh, that's an NC2A rule. We will have more in money next year, but uh, we're talking to some very fine individuals, and hopefully in the next couple of weeks we can wrap up our recruiting. And uh, we feel, as I mentioned before, very fortunate to have these people that the youth coaches, the high school coaches develop, and uh, we're able to benefit by them. You know, Brad, I think a lot of people who just sit in and kind of watch this tournament pay some casual attention to the Gophers, but maybe aren't real big, solid hockey fans, probably don't understand how much time goes into recruiting. I think they probably think that because you're sitting in the hotbed of hockey in the United States that they just walk in the door, and that's not true necessarily, is it? Well, it takes a lot of time, and I feel very fortunate to have, uh, I think, the greatest hockey staff in, in college. Uh, people like John Perpich and Mike Foley and Warren Stralow and Robin Larson and Bruce Lind, and uh, between the six of us, we'll see close to five iron high school games this past year, and uh, we're out every night, the nights that we're not playing, and uh, we enjoy it. It's a lot of work, but uh, that's why we're in it. We enjoy it. Isn't it tough, too, that when you get down to those numbers of players that you need in, in making those choices, well, it's awful tough because we only have about four to five scholarships this year, and to narrow that down, there's certainly more numbers than that, but it's a, it's a matter of numbers, but uh, it's, uh, it's a tough decision, but a very enjoyable one because there is such talent, and uh, we feel very proud to be from Minnesota and, uh, you know, to play with the Minnesota kid. You know, sometimes, too, that you have to assess trends, tendencies in the league and college hockey in general. Where is the game going? What are you seeing four or five years down the road? Is it going to be a heavier hitting game? Is it going to be a speedier game? Is it going to be what? Well, I think the game's getting better every year. The athletes are getting better. The coaching is better uh, with better facilities. Uh, you know, it's a very progressive, modern game. And, uh, you know, hopefully we could all keep up with it. And uh, you see this high school tournament. It's the greatest sport tack here in, in the United States. And, uh, as again, I feel very proud and very fortunate to be here and be able to watch it. Well, we're lucky to have you at the U, too, Brad, and thanks a lot for stopping down. Bob, let's go back to you. Thanks, Ed. You know, earlier, uh, <laughs> we were mentioning that we have uh, several folks working with us tonight, of course, Ed in our interview area, Rob Lear roaming around the building, and, of course, uh, Rob right now is ready with a, a certain individual who plays a very important behind-the-scenes role here at the high school hockey tournament. Rob? Right you are, Bob. We're beneath the stands and beyond uh, the locker rooms where all the skates are sharpened. You're watching the works and the very talented skills of Arnie Fishbach, who is the skate sharpener and has been here at the State High School Hockey Tournament since 1960. He got his apprenticeship under Henry, Henry McClowski, who worked every tournament up until two years ago when he passed away. And under that apprenticeship, you take over, Arnie, a very responsible job and having to take over all these skates that these high school kids wear throughout the tournament. Right. I have assisted Henry for about 18 to 20 years, and I've got my experience from him. And I guess I'm very fortunate to say that he's one of the first skate sharpeners and which a lot of the pros feel he was one of the best, Rob, in the business. And uh, from the time that I have started, the skates have changed considerably. They have went from the CCM Pro Light Blade with the Tackleberry booth, which was a leather boot, and now we have... Uh, a laying here in front of us with a two blade and it's a stainless steel blade. It's a little bit harder to sharpen, but it holds the edge much better than the Pro-Lite blade. Yeah, we have some problems breaking the, 
blade itself, but not nearly what it was with the pro, uh, pro light blade. The high school uh, hockey player, are they, are they hard to please? Uh, they're not really hard to please. They know what they want. And I guess if you give them what they want, there's no problem pleasing them. I understand uh, before this tournament is out, you'll skate, uh, you'll sharpen well over 200 pairs of skates. Exactly, Rob, right. Uh, the northern teams, we go 100%. Uh, the local teams, we get a good share of it. There are some local teams that prefer to sharpen their own because they have fellas that do it all season long for them and they're used to one particular machine. And I guess that I can't say that I blame them. This machine here, I note, that has been around a long time. At least it looks like an old-timer. This machine was built in 1946. It's been with the tournament one year after the tournament had started. And uh, it's a piece of equipment that Henry bought back in 1946 from Prairie Wall Manufacturing. It was built right here in St. Paul. And the firm is still in business manufacturing machines over in West St. Paul on Smith Avenue. Arnie, thank you for taking time out. I know you're very busy scheduled to chat with us, and we'll see you again. Thank you, Rob. Okay, Bob, so that's it from downstairs with a uh, sharpened skates. You should drop off your pair, because I think they need some sharpening. Either that, or you might need some lessons. Back upstairs. Glad to do it for you. I don't think the blades need sharpening. I just think the blades need a better skater. Uh, for those of you who may have missed it, some consolation action earlier today. Rochester Mayo beat East Grand Forks by a score of 5-4 to four in overtime. And then Cloquet beat Henry Sibley in an exciting game, 5-3. to three, But there was an open net goal at the very end of that game. So we'll have Cloquet and Rochester Mayo playing tomorrow for the consolation championship. Well, and now Bob Utek has a special guest for us down by ringside. Bob? What excitement. And here we are ringside, and I have a special guest all the way from Waupon, Wisconsin the head high school coach at Wapon, also the Let's Play Hockey Wisconsin Hockey Exchange man, Mike Cowan. Welcome, Mike, to the Civic Center. Thanks, Bob. This is a thrill being over here. Now, the big thing is you just finished the Wisconsin High School Tournament at Dane County Coliseum. You played a big role in it. Tell us about it. Who won it? Who are some of the good players? Well, Superior, for the second year in a row, was the class of the tournament. Uh, they beat Madison Memorial 7-0. Probably the top player in the tournament is well known in this area, a fellow by the name of Marty Wiedela, who will be a Division I player next year. Maybe the best defenseman also was from Superior Junior by the name of Dennis Will. Uh, we had an outstanding tournament, our semifinal game, uh, Madison uh, Memorial beat East 4 3, similar to our overtime game here. Mike, uh, I want to thank you for coming with us. Our time was very short, but I really appreciate it. So now back to Bob Bruce. Just a short time away from our next game, the Hibbing Blue Jackets versus the White Bear Mariner Dolphins. We'll be back with that action. This is the 1982 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. below in southern Minnesota and there's really not much to smile about unless you're riding in an escort oh the escort why it's a regular fun machine Be besides a nice four-door sedan you can put four people in there big people and when it snows when the 22nd of January when Main Street was almost impassable I was driving up and down the hills here and just having a ball I think they're great what America's looking for the Northlands found in Ford like to keep in touch with the latest sports news, dial sports 1-976-1313. For just 20 cents a call, get the latest news, scores, stories, plus special features from me, Ray Scott. Wherever sports news is being made, in the Twin Cities or across the nation, hear it first on dial sports. Call 1-976-1313. That's what KS95 FM is all about. Number one stereo music. Music and minute by minute changes in weather. And you can expect a whole music and weather and a whole lot of fun. You just won KS95 FM cash call. Bound fans, we won! We won! KS95 FM, the most listened to music station. Under the sun. I'm here in the locker room with Bob Carter. Bob, those goalies are making some tremendous saves out there. They sure are, just like the saves our customers are making at the big tournament sale at Bob Carter Ford AMC Jeep in Renault. Yes, but what about the slashing? We've slashed our prices way, way down. 
82 Fairmonts as low as 63.30, a new 81 Mustang just 52.21. But Bob, who do you think will win? Everyone who comes to Bob Carter Ford AMC Jeep and Renault. We're just five minutes east of the Mendota Bridge on 110 or South Robert to 110. Thanks, Bob. Now back to Al in the booth. live at the Civic Center. They're introducing the starting lineup for the Hibbing Blue Jackets, pretty much what they had last night. Gary Hooper on the wing, Pat Nicoletti and Greg Hooper. Uh, back on defense, Purpose and Sanderlin. And in the goal, Stan Bouch. Bouch, who is an excellent, excellent goalie. And of course, the head coach of Hibbing, George Purpich, who just the other night, yesterday, in fact, notched his 400th career victory. Look across the way for White Bear Mariner. Number four, Mike Crew coming onto the ice. There's Jeff Parker at center. Craig Schultz, number 14. And number 18, Pete Anderson. And number 18, Pete Anderson. And the head coach of the Dolphins, of course, Tom Simpson. And Bob, uh, Mariner's one of the teams that are switching goals, goalies also. It looks like Tim Bohr in the net. Yesterday, Brad Sperling played. There you have the officials for the game, John Whelan and Jeff Ilefsky. Well, Stan Vouch yesterday was uh, probably the outstanding goaltender in his day, and I'm sure he's going to get tested today. We'll see if he plays as well. If he did, when his fellow's that size, he's 6'2", 200 pounds. He covers a lot of the net. If he moves as well today as he did yesterday, there's a lot of scouts around here that are going to be just drooling to get that fella. Goaltenders, as you know, are very tough to come by. We saw some excellent goaltending in the past two days. This game here is going to feature the quickness of Hibbing up front against the size of Mariner. Mariner is a team with very skilled players on the wing and defense. Maybe not as quick as Hibbing. Hibbing with this outstanding line of Micheletti, Hooper, and Hooper who have been together for five years. Micheletti and Parker on the draw. Gary Cooper tried to shoot it in, but it was blocked, and now it's lofted into the zone by Big Perpich. Micheletti chasing it to the far side as it got away from Crew. Micheletti putting it in front. It's deflected off a stick and back outside the blue line. Sandalin across to Perpich on the left side. His defense partner drives it in. Borer turns it in behind as it came back off the boards. It's cleared to the right side. Greg Hooper centering pass. Oh, and another chance there right at the front of the net by Micheletti. Here he comes in front again. He was checked on the play by Gary Keeger, and the puck is cleared out to center ice. Parker passing off. In they come on the left side, and a shot is right on by Pete Anderson. Turned aside, and Bouch has his first Stop of the night, and now a long pass. Gary Coop Hooper moving in front, and he's brought down as they pinch in on him. Puck fed out to Parker at center. Jeff Parker, long shot, and Bouch direct side into the left circle. They've passed the minute mark of a scoreless first period as Perpich fails to get out, and now it's brought around behind by Krompetich. Long pass out to center ice, picked up by Fredrickson. Comes in over the line, top of the right circle, and a shot hit the traffic and comes to the near boards. And we are having a stoppage for a face-off. There's a break in the action. The score is Hibbing nothing and White Bear nothing. This book can help get you through college economics. This book can help get you through college. Call for your free copy. Face off to the left of Borer. Puck brought back in the corner, coming back to the net. Randy Keeger now comes on to the right after a brief pause for station identification. And here he is at the blue line, dumping a pass up the right side, an attempt to shoot it in. And Hanson blocked it and threw a heavy check in the process. And back comes Krompetich with a long shot that goes back to the net. Borer swiping at it, comes to the left corner. Brought back near the blue line, Krompetich fires it, and it deflects rink wide and picked up by Don Baker. And now they back out of play. We'll have a face-off in the neutral zone with 13-11 remaining in a scoreless first period between the Blue Jackets and the Dolphins. What a check Dan Hansen threw on Bruce Fishbeck. Fishbeck coming down the right side was checked by Hansen. He landed three-quarter way into the Hibbing bench. 
hibbing defenseman, big and strong, Sandal and Purpose. Purpose, they really hit you. And Zajac, Zajac dumping the puck in from the faceoff. Coming back, Sandal and behind the net. To the left, Purpose tips it up the wing. And now it's knocked back in behind the net. Sandalin will try his luck again. Around behind the Perpich. Perpich takes a check from McLeod. Puck goes to the far side. Girardi unable to get it. It's still in the zone. Now McLeod puts it in front. It deflects. Comes right back to the goaltender. And it's steered to the corner by Bouch. Now it's Zajac coming back to the net. He's pursued on the play by Bowman. And down he goes. And we're going to have a faceoff in the Hibbing zone. That's something that you didn't see too much of yesterday. You saw Zajac along the boards trying to control the puck, and that fellow Sandalin and Bowden, both on him, they knocked him down. Yesterday, the size of Mariner was enough to offset the quickness of Cloquet. They controlled the boards all night long. Here tonight, the hipping defenseman looked like they're gonna be able to give Mariner a good battle for that puck on the boards. Jeff Parker against Fredrickson on the draw to the right of Fouch. It comes back to the blue line. Mariner held it in temporarily, but now it's brought out, and we have a illegally, illegally advancing the puck call. Face off outside the Hibbing Blue Jackets blue line. Puck comes into the neutral zone, head ahead, and now it's shot in by Carpenter. Back of the goal, Borer setting it up. Cleared around on the right by Randy Keeger from the left point. It's held in by Hansen, tipped up off his stick. And now another long shot by Kern goes back of the net. Cleared to the left side and relayed on out to center ice. Hansen feeding a pass that comes loose off Kern. And the Mariner Dolphins coming back in up the slot. And it's broken up there as the puck got away from the attacking Bridges, who had a big night last night with a hat trick in the right corner. It's fed by Carpenter into the right circle, picked up by Fredrickson, a long rink-wide pass off the board. This is Kern, right circle, centers it back in front. It goes rink-wide to the left side. And now it's fed out to center ice, picked up by Andrikin, a high pass is batted down. Kern turning just inside his blue line, comes to the line and fires it down the ice. Hibbing making a change on the fly, and. We're going to have a stoppage and a face-off. 11-28 remaining in a scoreless first period. There's a break in the action with the score. Hibbing nothing and White Bear nothing. Titan hockey sticks and these fine dealers are proud to help bring you the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Titan, the hockey stick of Titans. Play underway, Sandalin at the Hibbing blue line, driving it off the near wall. It got by Bohr, who was trying to cut it off behind the net. Gary Keeger fed a pass, and now Fishback comes back to the right of his goal. Pokes it back for Keeger. It deflects. Here's Gary Hooper putting it right up the slot, and it just goes wide to the left as Borer dove, unable to get the puck, but it's picked up now by Gary Keeger. Micheletti forces him in behind. Feeds to the right, it's banked off the wall, it's held in at the point by Perpage, and now cleared to center ice. Right. Here's a chance for Mark Anderson, in over the blue line, he's got a man in front, the centering pass, and Fishback couldn't get a stick on it, it goes rink wide. Shot from the far point, deflects up, and hits Bouch. Now on the far side, Perpage is staggered by a check, and goes down, and we have a stoppage and a face-off to come to the left of the goal. Perpage taking a good hard shot that time from... Don Baker. That's Coach Tom Simpson of this Mariner Hockey Club, and he says their strategy always is to be taking the body. The first man in, knock him off the puck. We've got size. We've got to use it. And that's what they're going to have to do against this quick tipping club if they expect to win. Face off to the left of the goal. 10.43 remaining in the scoreless first period. And the puck deflects up high into the left corner. It's played back of the goal by Hansen, who pursues, flares it around on the right wing side. It comes to the point as Fredrickson failed to get it out. Cruz's shot is blocked in the slot. It's cleared off the boards and relayed out by Fredrickson. Picked up in the neutral zone. Moving in, Rutar with a shot wide. And center pass, they score! Went it off the goaltender, and Hibbing leads it. Kompetich putting it back in front and hit the goaltender and went in. Well, the shot was wide of the net, and as the goalie was moving across, Krompetich got to it. Those boards are very lively. That puck came out so quickly that Krompetich takes the rebound. He 
just shot it, hit the goalie and went in. You see Rutar shooting, puck missing the net, just jumping out. As the goalie's moving across, Crawford that's beat him to it. The puck just put in on the short side, hitting with a lead. That big, fast, hipping hockey club, when they're fast, they can be dangerous, and boy, did they ever use their speed right there. Pete Kropovich streaking in, and he puts that one away. Puck back into the Dolphin zone from the faceoff. Back of the goal, Bridges. Putting it in the right corner now. McLeod playing it off the board. Zajac on the far side. Takes a check from Rutar. The puck is cleared, and it comes back deep in the hipping zone to the left. This is Andrekin back. Clearing around behind on the right wing side, and it gets off the stick of Zajac and comes to center. Now in the center zone, Fredrickson got turned around. Zajac picks off his pass, plays it to the blue line. It's poked back out by Sandlin or by Hansen, and now it's shot into the Mariner zone by Kropotich, and he goes to the bench as Hibbing making a complete change on the fly. Now back comes big Randy Keeger. Shakes off a check and then loses his balance and falls as he dumps it in. Picked up in the left corner. And held in the zone by McLeod, but now it's cleared to center ice. One to nothing. Hibbing leading as the puck is shot back into the Hibbing zone. This is Perpich coming back of the net, feeding to the right for Sandalin. Sandalin waits for the traffic to clear. Now headman's for Gerardi moving in right circle. He was cut off by Bridges and he shot long and wide to the right. Prue check back of the net. Gerardi goes down after throwing the check. Puck is tied up and we'll have a face off. We now pause five seconds for station identification. This is the 1982 State High School Hockey Tournament. Channel 5, KSTP TV, St. Paul, Minneapolis. Nine oh three left. First period. One nothing Hibbing as the puck is brought back of the goal. Gary Keeger got turned around. Mariner keeping possession. Now it's chased by Pete Anderson. Pokes it off the boards out to center. Picked up by Sandalin. Sandalin driving it in. Borer gloves. Drops. Gary Keeger behind. Around on the right side. It'll come to Perpich, but it got by him and comes to center. Sandalin over to cover. Falls. Here's a chance for Mariner. And two men overskate the puck. Neither McLeod nor Parker could get their sticks on it. Now it's back into the Mariner zone behind the net. Fed to the left side, picked up there by Pete Anderson. Dumps it to center, Sandlin sliding it across on the left. Hanson gulps it in, comes off the boards to the left of the goal. But we have a whistle, and we'll have a faceoff back in the neutral zone with 8.14 remaining in this first period. one nothing for Hibbing. Coach George Purpose yesterday getting his 400th win in high school hockey. With another fine hockey club, but the key to his hockey club and how they do it tonight will be his defense. If they're big and strong enough to hold off that Mariner forward hockey club, then they're going to be able to win. So Here's Fredrickson the from the blue line. Guns a shot. Borer blocks. Rebound in the slot. And Randy Keeger closed, cleared it away just to the nick of time. It's fired around behind the net. And on the left side, Fredrickson shot. Hit a skate. Fredrickson digging it loose again. Firing a quick shot wide to the left. It's back of the goal. Bridges. Sidesteps a check there from Kern, comes out to the right, then he got turned back by Carpenter, tries the left side, comes through the circle with it. At the blue line, he's written off again, and this Hibbing team is hitting. That was Fredrickson who made the hit on Bridges. Now Fredrickson firing it in to the right of the goal. It was Kern down. He's going to the bench as he gets up. Does not appear to be injured. Now a pass at center off the stick of Gary Hooper. The Mariners come in. Here's a chance for Mark Anderson. He shoots. Bout makes the save. He hasn't pulled off any at all, apparently. Here's another chance for Mariner. Broken up as Baker goes down. Now it's cleared off the far boards. Greg Hooper relayed to the line, but not out. Held in again at the point. A long shot. And Big Bout reached up and grabs it and hangs on. Well, as you said, he looks hot again now. There's a break in the action. The score is hitting one. White Bear, nothing. Take some advice from Dave Lennox. Talk to the heating and cooling specialists here. Or call the professionals at this Lennox dealership. Do it early and save. 7-0-3 remaining in this first period. The faceoff to Bouch's left. Puck comes to this left side of the goal. In behind. Zajac Bell. It's 
cleared to the left corner and it's tied up there. They'll face off again to the left of Bouch. I mean, has to feel very confident with a goaltender like Bouch in that he doesn't give anything away around that net. Say Jack and Micheletti on the draw. Fed back to the right point, a drive goes wide and it's picked up on the right wing side now by Gary Hooper, headmans to Micheletti. He crisscrosses with Greg Hooper, moving in. Greg Hooper digging for the net. The shot hits the defenseman through and it rebounds to the left wing boards and it's brought out by Holton, stolen off a stick by Micheletti, chases it, picks it up, comes in, forced wide right by Gary Keeger, loose puck. And back of the, no the goal, Hooper slides into the boards. That was Gary Hooper. Greg Hooper centers and Gary fell, reaching for it in front of the net. Now a flip clear to center ice. Under control of Sandalin in the center circle. Backhands it in. It got by Prue. It comes to Borer, who sweeps it to his left, and Prue picks it up behind the net. Prue coming left. Feeds a pass. It's picked off. Greg Hooper, a shot. Borer, the save! And he dives to the right to cover a puck as Greg Hooper was about to get a chance. Well, two chances there for Hibbian, but Borer made both saves. The second one, he froze. And that line of Micheletti, Hooper, and Hooper here getting a couple of chances has to be the most outstanding line in the tournament, the most dangerous. Here's a shot by Hooper and another one. Micheletti coming over to get that rebound and Bohr making a save. There's Hooper taking the first shot. Micheletti pouncing on that rebound, just gets it towards the net and Bohr makes a second save. Face off to Bohr's right. Shot right across the front of the net from the face off. It comes out to the right point and it got by Andriken. Coming back, Hansen picks it up inside the Blue Jackets' blue line. Slides a pass out at center. Fredrickson lets it come to the right side. And it's broken up by the Mariner Dolphins and shot right back in. This is Hansen coming around behind the net. Clearing around on the right wing side. Fredrickson's pass. It's tapped out to center now. Parker dumping it back in offside. 5.37 to play in the first period. There's a break in the action. The score remains the Hibbing Blue Jackets 1, the White Bear Mariner Dolphins nothing. The Minnesota State Hockey Tournament is brought to you by your nearby Northland Ford dealer who invites the class of 82 to come in and test drive the exciting new Mustang. On the faceoff outside the Hibbing Blue line, the puck back deep in the zone, sandaling around behind. Head manning a pass now. It's broken up. Now it comes loose to Girardi. Girardi is skated off into the boards by Schultz, who rink wides a pass to the left. It's fired on into the zone by Pete Anderson. Behind the net, Sandal and dumping it up the left side. Girardi relaying to Bobin now. Bobin a back pass to Girardi, back to Bobin in the slot, and his backhander goes wide. Girardi picks it up behind the net. Comes to the near board, stops, trying to get away from Bridges. Bridges jams him, the puck back to the point. Sandal and a shot, and rebound, Chad! And Borer makes the save, deflecting it back of the net as he had two men in front. Kemp and Bobin trying to knock it home. Now back come the Dolphins at center ice. On the attack, it's shot in by Bridges. Hat trick in the first game of the tournament for Mariner last night. Overskated by Purpich, puts it in front of the net. And Sandlin breaks up a chance there as the puck came to Fishback. Now Purpich around on the left side. Girardi poking it to center. Here comes Bobin. Bobin falls, shovels a pass to his right, but Kemp goes down on the play. And back come Mariner. Brought in over the line by Randy Keeger. Slides a pass to the right. Now along the near boards, a loose puck from the point. It's shot in deep by Mark Anderson in the far corner. And Baker was checked on the play, and the puck is cleared out of the Hibbing zone. Picked up by Krompetich to the right of the Mariner goal, and he overskates it as he was being checked on the play by Keeger. The puck cleared to the left side, and this is Mark Anderson feeding a long pass over in the right for Baker. Relays it to Fishback, but it's broken up. Here's a loose puck in the zone, a shot, and Bouch got onto that one, turning it aside on a quick shot by Mark Anderson. Puck back out to center, and the Mariners drive it right back in. As Gary Keeger fires it in. It comes to center, and Krompetich runs into a check that turned him around when he walked into McLeod. A centering pass blocked by the goaltender Borer as it was put in front by Carpenter, and Borer traps it and holds it for a stoppage in the faceoff with 3.31 remaining. There's a break in the action with the score hitting one and White Bear nothing. Only private ownership can offer that personal touch. Visit Tom Perry Stone Wings and experience one of life's pleasures, an evening of superb dining. Stone Wings, Bloomington. Face 
face off to Borer's left. Nicoletti on the draw with Zajac back to the point. Sandalin shot hit the traffic. Back of the goal, Randy Keeger tied up by Micheletti. The puck in the right corner. Micheletti running into another man and bowling him over. The puck comes in front of the net. Picked off by Mariner. Brought to the blue line. Gary Hooper missed a check and it shot back into the Hibbing zone to the left. And in the corner, it's McLeod trying to put it in front, but it goes back of the net. Cleared to the near boards. Moving in here. Here's Keeger firing. And that goes back of the net. Randy Keeger shooting and it's Trapped and held, we'll have a face-off as the puck is dug out of the mesh behind the hitting goal. 2.57 well, remaining. McLeod and Holton working hard to try and get that puck free. Sandilin throwing a real heavy check on Holton, but the strong Mariner forecheck there gave them a couple of opportunities, but they couldn't beat Bowden or Bouch, and they finally put it on the net, and the face-off comes outside. From the face-off, the puck all the way back to Borer in the Mariner goal. Now behind the net, Randy Keeger is tied up by Fredrickson. He falls, and the puck is covered underneath the Mariner player. We'll have a face-off in the White Bear zone. Hibbing looks uh, much better than they did last night. Although they were quick last night, they've got better puck control, much better passing. This looks like their finest period. But last night, after two periods, they went into somewhat of a shell, and they allowed Sibley to come back. If they continue to play like this, it's going to be real tough for Mariner because they're so quick up front and they've got some size on defense. Mariner, a tough team, they keep grinding you, so they're far from out of this game with the size they've got. Parker and Fredrickson taking the draw. Puck comes back to the net. This is Prue to the left side. Relayed to center ice now by Fishback. A return pass. This is Pete Anderson firing, and he fired it wide to the right. On the far side, Schultz to Parker. Got away from him. It's brought back of the net. Now Parker jamming the man to the boards as he tied up the man with the puck and drink, and it's cleared to the line and out and shot back in offside. Well, Gary Keeger caught that up a little high, about a step behind the blue line. He felt if he just carried it over the line <laughs> to maybe get away with it, but the referee was right on the line and offside. I see a lot of those hipping fans down here for the tourney. Warmer down here, huh? <laughs> Aren't you glad you came south for the winter? Now the puck is shot in back of the goal. It's cleared around on the left by Blagu. Oh, Parker throwing a good hit there on Rutar, but here comes Aaron Fredrickson over the line, and he fell as he was setting up to shoot. The puck cleared back out to center. Now Blagu fires it back in, and this is Gary Krieger coming back of the net. Gary Keeger feeding on the left side. Pete Anderson's pass goes rink wide off a skate. Keeger again firing it out off the boards. It's brought back in by Sandalin, and he's jammed, and the puck is frozen just inside the line. We'll have another faceoff, and they're down to 146 remaining in the first period. Still one nothing for the Blue Jackets. There was some talk earlier in the day, Al, that Hibbing was, had about five or six players who were suffering from food poisoning. Well, they don't look like it out there, and Micheletti, as you know, had the flu last night, but it's good to see he's out here tonight, and he's flying. Now from the faceoff, the puck in the neutral zone. And shot back into the Mariner end of the rink by Blagu, and it goes out of play. I think it was the Grand Rapids team was down here a couple years ago, and they were one of the co-favorites, and they had about six fellows with the flu, and they got put out immediately. From the face-off, the puck comes into the Mariner end and cleared out on the left side now. Mark Anderson, a rink-wide pass, picked up off the boards. And shot in by Fishback. It winds up behind the hitting goal. It's cleared to the right side and relayed on out to center by Bobin. Now a pass picked off. Moving in front. Here's a long shot by Sandalin. It's blocked. Now the puck is in the slot area. Cleared away to the right side. Another long shot. And that one goes wide to the right as Bobin. One fired one. Now back at the blue line, Blagu shoots, and that goes up off the glass, rebounding to the far boards. Bobin playing it back to the right of the goal. Fishback comes back of his net to the near boards. Blagu gets a loose puck, fires again, hitting the glass. He's up high with it. On the far side, it's Baker taken out of the play, but Mariner comes right back with the puck at center ice in over the blue line, and we have a whistle and an offside call as puck was brought in offside by Bridges. 
Scott Bridges made a good move there, but he just momentarily lost that puck at the blue line. He had to carry it over with his skates. And by that time, his wing had crossed the line. We have an offside. Very physical period, by the way. Both teams hitting heavy, not afraid to come in there and take the body, and that's been very effective for them in this period. Nicoletti and Zajac on the draw with 35 seconds. Puck bouncing around in center. Zajac tried to shoot it in, but it's blocked. Gary Hooper plays it into the White Bear zone. Pass on the left. Dropped back by Holton. Shot around behind by Prue. And now cleared rink wide to center ice. Played off the boards by Andreken. It's knocked back into the Hibbing zone. Cleared again. And now here's a chance. A centering pass by McLeod goes rink wide. Gary Hooper feeding it out to Micheletti. Micheletti at center. Firing a long shot. Borer gloves that. And there's the horn to end the first period with the score hitting one and white bear nothing good period of hockey action between two very good teams white bear mariner really having their hands full with the hipping blue jackets jackets leading one to nothing shots on goal during that period hipping eight mariner five Krapatich, Krapatich, of course, coming up with the goal for Hibbing. They lead it one to nothing. And Rob Lear is now downstairs live on the ice with Perpich, the head coach of the Hibbing Blue Jackets. Of course, George Perpich, and uh, your assessment of this first period, it's really been strength against strength. These teams are physical. Yeah, they're both tough teams. It'll be a tough game for us. Your goaltending, I guess you can't ask a whole lot more. You've kept everybody off the boards now for four periods. He's a tough goalie. I, I think, I hope he can keep us in it. Are you doing something, George, with your forwards to have them come back to help out so much uh, to go through four periods of a tournament like this scoreless? You must be doing something to emphasize on your defense. Well, we uh, we go with three lines, as I told you, with another swing line, and so we're able to skate with anybody, and I hope we can continue to do so. All right, George. Best Thank of you. luck to you. Thanks for stopping by. Bob, let's go back upstairs. Thanks, Rob. That's the end of the first period with the score. Hibbing one, Mariner nothing. out to blow away the confusion about pickups with the new Chevy S10. Let's compare mileage. Ford's late entry small truck can't match. S10 EPA gas mileage ratings. They don't offer an optional V6. S10 does. Ford can tow only 3,000 pounds. S10 can tow 4,000 pounds. Compare cargo box size. And S10 is longer and wider. The new size Chevy S10. There's never been a truck like it before. come over downtown Minneapolis. First Bank Place. A commitment to banking excellence. From First Bank Minneapolis. Now, just when you need it, the home sale at Target. Save 50 cents on every skein of Sayel yarn. Choose from an assortment of solid colors and ombres. Only 89 cents a skein. Organize your closets with colorful tubular plastic hangers. Target home sale price, 10 for $1. Stock up on Clorox soft scrub and Dow bathroom cleaner. Now 99 cents each. For great savings, shop the home sale at Target. Some men never ride with the pack. Now, for them, there is the Nighthawk. A motorcycle so different, it looks like you own the only one. Looks like Jake's going home. I don't think so. Jake lives that way. The Nighthawk by Honda. See the new Honda Nighthawk at Osseo Honda and Stillwater Honda. Back live at the St. Paul Civic Center, Bob Bruce along with Lou Nanny and Lou uh, Hibbing really showing themselves as, as one of the strongest teams in this tournament, uh, really in control in that first period, and they scored at 437 to take a 1-0 lead into the locker room after one period of play. That's right. I thought that, that period by Hibbing was the most impressive period by any team in the tournament so far. They showed quickness up front, and their defensemen are big and strong, and they're able to give that strong Mariner 
team, especially the forwards, a bit of a problem. Here's the, the goal. Rutsar carried the puck down, took a shot on the right side. The puck came off the board so fast. Krompetic, now there's the shot missing the net. Krompetic coming from the left, the top of your screen. He's going to shoot that puck before the goaltender Bohr can react. Went off Bohr right into the net. A fine goal. That was hipping speed paying off right there. They're extremely quick. I, I feel overall they're the quickest team up front in the tournament. Did you notice on the bench the assistant coach of Hibbing is wearing a headset to a coach upstairs? The only team I've seen in the tournament using the same sort of communications that the North Stars are using. Maybe he's talking to you up here. <laughs> I didn't notice that, but uh, I know Hibbing plays extremely well. They, they are using four lines. George Purpose said they're using three, but they're using four. They have two extra fours and they use it as a fourth line, and maybe that's causing him to be so fresh. Well, Hibbing leads it one to nothing. We'll be back with more between periods. The exciting action of the 1982 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament will continue after station identification. We're here to tell you with IRA at TCF, you can build a retirement fortune a month at a time. TCF makes it easy with three monthly deposit plans. IRA at TCF. Great for everyone. All who agree, please stand up. Get IRA at TCF. Hey, come back. TCF isn't open now. There's a hungry beast feeding in your house. It's your old furnace, and its appetite is costing you more and more every day. Your Lennox dealer can tame your heating costs with a new Lennox Conservator Gas Furnace, the most efficient gas furnace yet. Dave Lennox on hand, suggesting South Suburban folks call George at George Fredrickson Heating. Or call Dorothy or Carl at Bowman Sheet Metal, serving Wright County from Buffalo, Minnesota. These guys are doing the job. And when you build them right, you can back them right. That's why Ford Care coverage comes on Escort and now EXP. For two years, you pay nothing. Zip on scheduled maintenance or repairs. Virtually all you pay for is gas. You also get hundreds in upfront cash direct from Ford. Hundreds in cash. Plus coverage that's the closest thing to cost-free driving. Ford Care coverage. When you build them right, you can back them right. Channel 5, KSTP-TV, St. Paul, Minneapolis. We now return to the St. Paul Civic Center Arena and the 1982 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Back live at the St. Paul Civic Center after one period of play, Mickey Krompetich has gotten Hibbing a one to nothing lead over the White Bear Mariner Dolphins. Here you see they're resurfacing the ice before the second period of action. Right now downstairs, next to that ice is Bob Utek. Bob? My guest is very special tonight in the person of Frank Larson, who used to referee in this tournament. And Frank recently had a very serious operation. I'd like to talk about it. Frank, did they take some sort of a tumor right off the top of your head, literally? Well, yes, they did, Bob. It was about the size of a grapefruit that I didn't know about, and I didn't have any inclinations of have anything wrong with it. One night, uh, one afternoon, I just passed out at home. And uh, I went down to Rochester, and I had agreed to take it out, and it took them eight and a half hours. And even right after the operation, I uh, was in intensive care for three days. I got out of intensive care. And from then on, I just kept walking and walking, and here I am today. And now, and and now, now this was non-malignant. Non-malignant. And something maybe the size of an orange, huh? About an orange, between the orange or a grapefruit. It was the largest one ever taken out in, in Rochester. It, right off the brain. Yeah. And the big thing is now, Frank, I understand that by next fall, you expect to be back refereeing, and you, do you still work in the WCHA? No, no, I don't. I uh, cut down the travel because of uh, my business and that, and so I just worked the high school, and then I work with small colleges around. You know, I think that's a great message that uh, out there in the world, if some of you people have an injury or a, a, a tumor coming on and somebody scares you, remember, here's the guy that just had one out and things are getting a little bit better. Well, this, this is right, Bob. They said for three months I'd have to take it easy, and, uh, and I am. And after that, it's going to take about nine months for me to really get my strength back 100%. But the way it's going right now, it's been very good. And I've been very pleased with, with the uh, results of it. And so is the doctors and that, but they've still told me, now, don't abuse it, just take it easy, because it could be, uh, you could get a repercussion of this if you tax your body too much. Okay, now, 
You still have some kids playing, and I just quickly, uh, one of them is down at Gustavus in a big weekend Division II tournament, that's, right? That's correct. All right, Frankie, I want to thank you very much for coming down with the message. I'm going to throw it back to Bob Bruce upstairs, and we'll be ready with some more hockey action. My pleasure, Bob. Well, at this point, we don't know whether or not White Bear Mariner is going to get a shot at winning this championship of the 1982 tournament. One award, though, that they would win, hands down, is that of best mascot. I love it. Rob Lear is downstairs with the Dolphin cheerleaders. Take a good, take a good look. This is the White Bear Lake Mariner mascot, and it is one of the most outstanding of this tournament. Unfortunate, though, that either the cheerleaders of White Bear Lake Mariner or the mascot itself are allowed on the ice at the same time. One or the other, not both. Here's a good look at the uh, mascot as well, the cheerleaders. She is the captain of them. We're talking with Julie Fish, and I know this has been a great experience for all you girls. It sure has, and we're really glad to be here because it, since it's our first year, and it's our, this is Mariner's 10th anniversary, so it really makes it a big thing. I know that you said you're a bit upset, though, from your cheering section across the way. They're not really into this game like they were last night. Yeah, last night they were really peppy, and we just hope that tonight they'll get into a little more since I don't know we're behind right now if we can catch up maybe it'll help I understand you got a little cheer for us let's do that and then we'll get back to some more hockey okay ready all right there you have it from the White Bear Lake Mariner cheerleaders their school at KSDP number one no argument here Bob back upstairs well, I just love that dolphin. Well, we've got two more exciting periods of hockey. Don't go away. This is the 1982 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. You're looking at the two best reasons I take good care of my brakes. They're why I go to Midas on a regular basis. Midas inspects brakes the right way. I pull the wheel. If anything needs doing, I know it gets done right. Some people say I'm overly cautious, but I don't think so. I just feel better going to Midas. Where nothing but the best is ever gonna do. Trust the Midas touch. Joy Christian Brothers' great stick shift. Shift to the only aluminum stick approved for play by the NHL. Christian's revolutionary aluminum shaft hockey stick is lighter than wood, and that means this stick is quick. Every aluminum shaft has the exact same weight and flex. That's consistency. Pro hockey players say it's true. They stick handle better, pass better, shoot quicker, harder, and with more accuracy with Christian Brothers' aluminum stick. Join the ship to the Christian Brothers' aluminum hockey stick. Thatch can choke a lawn to death. Of course, you can remove thatch by messing up your lawn with a power rake or messing up your back. Or you can use the self-propelled Snapper HiVac with the economical thatcherizer attachment. It plucks the harmful thatch from the lawn, then vacuums it into the grass catcher for easy disposal. The result is a beautiful revitalized lawn. And it's also great on the Snapper HiVac rider. You and your lawn come out in great shape. Snapper, discover the difference. Here in the Northland, a lot of Ford owners not only have very good taste, they have very good memories. I've had a lot of Fords in my day. I've had a 1929 Model A, a 1930, and a 1936 two-door. They were all used cars. 1953, a 1955, a 1957, a 1959, and a then in 1960, and a 69, and a 71, and a 73, and a 70. Of our coach, Big George Perfect, who has 400 career victories. His record, get this, is 400, 177, and 19. A long coaching career coming to an end after this tournament. And Lou and Al, what a great way for a career to come to an end if he could carry on and perhaps win the championship of this tournament. Well, in northern Minnesota, I don't think that there's a more renowned name in hockey right now than unless it were Mariucci. Between the two of them, they've been around for 100 years, and they've got a great deal of knowledge, and they've seen a good many hockey players come down the pike. Well, what does White Bear Mariner have to do to get back into this game? Well, I'll tell you one thing. They're going to have to start uh, being a little more physical. They're, they're actually getting out hit a little bit, which is surprising. Hibbing, and, and most notably their defensemen, have been strong enough to knock Mariner off the puck, which is something we didn't see all day yesterday. You know Hibbing's quick up front, so you've got to slow him down. 
You've got to take the body when you go to check him. And the Hibbing's been able to stay away from those checks, control the puck. They've had some excellent opportunities, and you know they've got an explosive forward line in the Hooper twins and Micheletti. So Mariner's going to have to be a little more physical up front than they've been. If Hibbing's checking Mariner off the puck, then they're beating Mariner really at their own game. That's exactly right, which is completely surprised me. That's why I said that was the most impressive period I've seen by any team in the tournament so far, because Hibbing played it both ways. They've got the speed, but they also were very physical. Ready for the second period, and Al Shaver. And watching this game here tonight live, a record Friday night crowd of 18,985. Second record set today. The afternoon session drew a record number two. The puck shot into the Mariner zone. Cleared to the left side. This is Pete Anderson trying to come out. Checked out along the boards. Micheletti trying to get the puck. It comes loose into the zone now. And Schultz was checked, and now here's Parker in the right circle going to the forehand. Now forced back of the goal, putting it out in front, and it's cleared away to the near circle. Parker again picking it up in the slot, going to the right corner. Checked there by Sandlin. The puck comes back of the net, and on the left side, Greg Hooper clears to the line. Here's a shot by Keeger through traffic, poked away by Boats, back of the net, cleared out to the point. Pro a shot. Bounces around and Boach clears that away to his right again. Sandlin brings it in behind. Got by a check at the goal side. And now his pass comes off a stick back into the Mariner zone. And picked up now by Greg Hooper who got to it first. Pass back to the blue line. His shot winds up to the left of the goal. Prue has it for Mariner. Clears it away to the left wing boards. Pete Anderson to Parker. Parker firing it in then going to the bench as they make a forward change on the fly. They puck at the blue line. Now it is held in. Moving in off the point is Baker. Baker falls to his knees in the corner. The puck back of the net. This is Andreken. Clearing to the left wing side. Hibbing trying to come out on the attack. A pass at center. Krompetich coming back for it. Sliding it to his right. But we have a whistle. And we have a cross-checking penalty being assessed at the minute 32 second mark. It will be our first penalty of the hockey game, and the offender is number 10, Don Baker. Baker committed a foul down by the Hibbing net, but since Hibbing had control, it was a delayed penalty. wasn't called until the play got center right. We'll see it down here. Baker getting his stick up a little too high when he takes a man on the boards. And as the puck came back up ice, it had a delayed penalty. Finally called when Mariner touched the puck at center right. I was watching Mariners work out here the night before the tournament. And I was talking to somebody from the school and a couple of things happened on the ice during the practice that seemed to uh, cause Baker to become ticked off. And I said to the person I was watching the workout with, I said, has Baker got a short fuse? And the fellow said, very. <laughs> Gary Hooper losing control. Micheletti takes it over, makes the turn in the neutral zone, swings by Zajac, comes in over the blue line, working toward the right corner, forced back of the goal by Bridges, stops, comes to the right side now into the corner, back to Gary Hooper, faces the point, feeds it back there, gets a return pass, tried to put it in the slot, but it's blocked, and now Bridges trying to come away. He's got Zajac preceding him up the ice, can't find him open, though, because of the traffic, so he shoots it in. Zajac taken out along the near wall. Gary Hooper controlling. Plays it around behind the net. Goes to the right corner. Now a pass on the far side. Picked up at center by Micheletti. Micheletti comes to the line with Gary Hooper trying to work his way through the defense. But Bridges and Randy Keeger break it up. A centering pass. Bridges clears it in behind. Now ties up the Hibbing player with the puck. It's Gary Hooper taking it over. Now gives it back to Micheletti, who was tied up earlier. Fades it back to the left point. Sandlin back to Micheletti. Top of the circle, over to the left circle. Greg Hooper, a shot. That's blocked. It's held in by Krompetich at the right point. Fake the shot. Over to Micheletti, a shot. Got it right on, and the save by Borer. Puck back in the right corner. Micheletti digs it loose. Comes to the right circle. Comes to the slot. Oh, and then Zajac broke it up. It comes out to center ice. Sandlin beating Zajac to the puck. And the... Hibbing Blue Jackets keep possession as it's shot in by Krampetich. From behind the net, Randy Keeger getting ready for the golf season. Drives it down the ice and Bouch almost deflected that into his net. 
Maybe played it a little too casually. Attack underway again. This is Andrikan into the zone. To the left of the goal. Tried to put it in front. It was blocked. And now it's played by Bobin back to the far point. A return pass to Bobin comes in the left corner. They're back at full strength as Baker returns. And the puck tied up in the corner by members of both teams. We'll have a face off to the left of corner. 11.22 remaining in the second period. There's a break in the action. The score is Hibbing 1. White Bear nothing. Motorcraft 10W40, super premium motor oil, now just 69 cents with five-quart purchase, and Motorcraft rebate at all Kmart stores. Motorcraft oil, just 69 cents at Kmart. From the face-off, here's Parker at center for Mariner, broken up nicely in the neutral zone by Bowman. The puck is shot back into the Mariner end of the rink in the right corner, Prue, playing it to the near boards for Schultz. Now Schultz trying to come out, plays it to the line. It was held in momentarily, now cleared by Prue. And broken up at center and driven down the ice by the Blue Jackets. Gary Keeger feeding up the right side. And down on the play goes Schultz as it's held in by Bobin. Into the corner now and Garardi goes down. Parker failed to get out. Played around behind by Gary Keeger to Prue. Dumps it up the left side. A long rink-wide pass now. Comes back in the hibbing zone all the way. And we have an icing call. And they'll go back for a face-off to the left of Tim Borer. 10-27 remaining in the second period. There's a break in the action. The score hibbing one. And White Bear nothing. Sometimes old-fashioned is still the best. At Stone Wings, we think reservations are more than a courtesy. It's our way of doing business. Stone Wings, Bloomington. Fishback taking the face off against Fredrickson. The puck goes to the far boards. Here's a long shot right across the front of the net from the left point. It's held in by Perpich. And his pass is picked off. Here comes Bridges going to his left, getting by one man, then jammed by Sandalin, who takes him out, and he falls to the ice as he comes off the boards, and the puck is down below. We'll have a face-off. Some heavy checking out here, Al. You know, people might think that uh, because Edina had to play an overtime yeah. game, if this doesn't go into overtime, that a team coming out of this game would have an advantage, but they really won't because this has been very physical, more physical than the first game. And this will take a lot out of the winning team, whichever team. So it should be pretty even for tomorrow night, whoever Edina has to play. Now from the faceoff, Nicoletti firing the puck rink wide. Here's Greg Hooper trying to get around Bridges. He's pulled down, and Bridges will take a sit in the penalty box for a couple of minutes on the trip, which comes at 4.56. Well, Bridges was pointing to the referee. He thought he took a little dive, and uh, Hooper, although he was tripped, Followed through with a little Dino Cicerelli motion at the end. It made it look a little worse than it was as we'll look in the replay. As you see Bridges reaching for the puck right there, and now you're going to see uh, Hooper just going to a little sprawl. The extra upper body motion that draws attention to it. Diving Dino give lessons on the fine <laughs> art of taking well, the old flopper room. <laughs> and that looked like a pretty good one right there. Yes. <laughs> we'll give him a 5 9. Here's Krampetic back to retrieve the puck in the neutral zone for Hibbing. Working to his left, head manning to Micheletti now. In over the blue line, left circle, broken up by Prue, chased by Micheletti into the left corner. And now he got bowled over as he tried to get the puck back to the point. Now it's brought into the right circle. Here's a shot that goes wide. Back of the goal, Sandalin putting it in the right circle, and it's picked up and cleared down the ice. Zajac getting it out of the zone. Hibbing back for another charge in the power play, and here it comes at center. Krompetich with a good burst going right up the middle, and he couldn't get through the two defensemen as Prue and Gary Keeger sandwiched him. The puck goes in the right corner, and we have a Hibbing man down on the puck in the corner. Micheletti will have a faceoff uh, to the right of Borer. 9.17 left now, and we've got 1.13 remaining in the penalty. There's a break in the action. The score remains Hibbing one, and White Bear nothing. The Minnesota State Hockey Tournament is brought to you by your nearby Northland Ford dealer. He has the pickup of the 80s. Ranger, built tough like the big ones, saves on gas like the small ones. Face off to the right of Tim Borer. Out of the Hibbing bench. 
Play underway as the puck comes to the point and comes out to center off Hanson's stick. Hanson back, letting men clear the zone. Now he shoots it in. Winds up to the left of the goal. Randy Keeger got spun around on a check. Brought to the left corner by Kemp. Back out to the right point, and Vreken skating laterally to the left now. Deep in the slot, a shot goes wide to the left. Borer clears around behind to his right, and it's picked up in the corner by Fredrickson. He's all tied up there by Gary Kager. Now a pass fed back to the point. Bobin to Andreken, a long shot, and it's covered in front by Randy Kager, who fell on it. Kager made a good move there. As the point man Andreken was moving in, he knew that he would be screening the goaltender. He fell laterally, blocked that shot, and covered up, so he got a whistle on it. Defensemen for Mariner are doing a fine job killing penalties, the Keeger twins. Time remaining on the penalty is now down to 37 seconds on Bridges. Now it's Pete Anderson trying to clear. He's tied up by Bobin, who falls. The puck comes loose, and then another man goes down as Kemp lost his balance. Finally, the puck is cleared by Parker as he's dumped on a hard check at the blue line by Fredrickson. Hansen beating a short pass to the right. Now it's broken up by Pete Anderson. Hansen clearing it out again. Here's a two-on-two two and a long shot. Goes wide to the right. Fredrickson putting it in front, but it's cleared back to the right side by Randy Keeger. Fredrickson again to the right of the goal as Bridges come on. They're back at full strength. Bridges on the ice with the penalty expiring. Puck along the near boards. And being controlled in the skates. Finally, it's poked loose out of the skates of Parker. Back in the right corner. Gary Keeger failed to clear. Chance to the right side for Micheletti. And it's broken up. Micheletti putting it in front again. And Greg Hooper couldn't get a shot off. Again, it's cleared behind. Micheletti chasing it down to the left corner. Goes down when he's checked by Parker. And out come the Dolphins at center ice. A rink-wide pass to the right. Comes in off Bridges' stick. Bridges pursuing, but a good save there. Diving to knock it away to the corner was Hanson. Now back comes Micheletti. Broken up at center ice. Back, back to the blue line. And it's Gary Keeger firing it. Into the hibbing zone, Boach blocking it behind the net on the cutoff. Cleared off the near boards, but not out. Backhanded in by McNeil. It came out again, and then Baker shot it in a second time offside. Seven minutes remaining in the second period. There's a break in the action. The score, hibbing one and White Bear nothing. Write checks. Earn interest. Get both with a TCF pass card checking account. back and Krampetich on the draw. The puck being shot in by Bridges. Sandlin checked along the far boards. It comes out to the point. Fed to Bridges at the right point. Now long shot and it's kicked out by Bouch to his left. Rukar in the corner. We have penalties being assessed here. And the time of the penalty will be 8.17. And the offender is Sandlin. Sandlin knocking Baker down in front of the net. The puck wasn't there, and he's going to be going off. And this will give Mariner a chance to tie the game after Hibbing had had two power play opportunities, didn't score in either one of them. Watch Baker in front of the net. And as he's going over the side, there you saw Sandlin coming in, cross-checking Baker down. And a power play advantage for Mariner. This fellow's a good defenseman. Scott Sandlin moves the puck well, big and strong. One of the outstanding young defensive prospects in the state. Face off between Zajac and Krompetic. Here's Baker now working toward the slot, firing wide on the left. Zajac behind the net, plays it to the far boards. McLeod after it, he has it, makes the turn. Tried to put it in the corner, comes off a stick now. And on the far side, Hanson loses it, tries to get it back, plays it back to the net, and Drinken driving it around on the right side, but it's trapped in the corner. Head to the left point now, Gary Keeger. Into the right circle, back to Bridges at the near point, and his shot deflected wide left by Krompetic. Mariner keeping the pressure on now on the power play. Back to the near point. Here's McLeod putting it in front. It goes off Dayjack skate. It's cleared to the near point, but not out. Here's a drive by Bridges, and Bouch turns that aside to his right. Bouch coming up with all the answers again as Bridges gets set for another shot, and he hit the outside of the goal on Bouch's left. 
Puck along the near boards now, and it's cleared by Hibbing all the way down the ice. That'll give them a chance to make some changes, get fresh troops on as the penalty time is now down to 55 seconds. One nothing for the Blue Jackets. And here comes McLeod moving in, off wing, forced back of the goal. Zajac tried to jam it in front, but it hits the back of the goal. And we're going to have a face-off outside the blue line as it wound up in the mesh. 5.29 remaining in the period, 47 seconds in the penalty. There's a break in the action with the score of the Hibbing Blue Jackets. One, the White Bear Mariner Dolphins nothing. Now, just when you need it, the home sale at Target. You'll discover bargains for all around your home. For great savings, shop the home sale through Saturday at Target. They're underway in the neutral zone. Now on the right side, Schultz dumps it in over the line. This is Parker trying to put it in front. It's blocked by Bouch, a centering pass. Here's a chance at the right side. Parker, oh, he scores! Well, Parker... Parker Schultz and Anderson all around that net. They had some good opportunities. Parker taking a shot. Anderson getting a, a, a goal finally after a pass across from Schultz. Tying this game on the power play. You're going to see Schultz right there. He centers it out to Anderson. Anderson shoots it. Parker takes a shot. He misses. Going to go right back to Anderson. He puts it up while Bouch is down line flat. That's the only place Anderson could put it. Upstairs. Time of the goal is 9.49. So, 9.49 in the second period. That means 24.49 of this game before they finally beat Bouch. There's another shot by Schultz turned aside. And they called for a stoppage of play. Again, we've got a problem with the goal coming off the anchor in post. 5.01 remaining in the second period. The score now tied 1-0. That goal is Pete Anderson from Jeff Parker and also assisting is Craig Schultz. We'll see another look here as you see the three plays around the net. Parker missing a good try right there and it comes right back out. That's Pete Anderson on your left and he's going to put it upstairs right there over Bouch as he was trying to turn around and get back on his feet. Face off to the right of Bouch now. Puck in the circle. Parker backhanding a shot that's wide to the right. Puck in the corner to the left of the goal. Fed back to Bridges at the right point. Takes a shot. Bouch got a pad on that. Schultz putting it in front. And has picked up Gary Hooper starting Micheletti back now. Both Hoopers and Micheletti on the break. Micheletti in over the line. Deep in the slot to Hooper. Gary Hooper shot. And he shot it wide. Right across the front of the net. Held in at the blue line by Perfect. Who goes down as he runs into Parker. Brought back of the goal on the left side. Now Bridges goes down. We're going to have a penalty against the Hibbing Blue Jackets. A delayed penalty as it's fed to Schultz at the line, but it's offside. And the time of the penalty will be 10.35. And that puts Mariner right back on the power play on a holding penalty. And it's being assessed against the team captain, Pat Micheletti. Micheletti with a great skating strike coming down the ice. He had made a nice play to give him Hooper a chance, but then he, after the chance, he's chasing his defenseman around the net and grabbed him. No question about that penalty. But he, this fellow, one of the outstanding youngsters in the state, he's got a skating style very reminiscent of Dennis Savard of Chicago, hasn't he? Else? Yeah. Boy, very clever with the puck also. Extremely quick. Face off in the neutral zone to resume play. Krampetic against Zajac. Hibbing getting possession, cleared to the far boards. Now Mariners Baker is checked, but gets the puck back and fires it in. Winds up in the left corner. Zajac lets it come back to McLeod, back to Zajac. Off the boards to the right point. Bridges returning it to McLeod. Now back to Bridges, deep in the slot, a shot, and Pouch turns that away to his left. It's held in by Gary Keeger. Now to Zajac. On the far side, Baker comes to the circle with it. Back beside the net to Zajac. Zajac to Baker. Baker putting it in front, and it's deflected away from McLeod and cleared down the ice. Borer out to his right to sweep it back of the goal line, and Bridges picks it up, comes back of the net. Now let's McLeod take it. Swings out to the left. Lost it. Trying to get by a check in, the, in his own zone. It was broken up by Girardi, but now they carry on. Here's Baker playing it in. Got by Andriken, picks it up in the right corner, got turned around, fed a pass and hit Parker, gets it again, back to the point, 
And it's held in by a falling Gary Keeger. Now to Zajac in the right corner. Back for Zajac from McLeod. Back to McLeod. Out to the left point. Gary Keeger reaches, holds it in. Plays it around on the board. Zajac to Baker. Checked by Girardi. Girardi jamming him. The puck is worked loose now. Fed back of the net for Zajac. Comes to the left side. Now back to Bridges at the right point. His shot turned aside by Bouch. Shot by Baker. Blocked. Cleared. Keeger holding it in. Kicking it ahead with escape. McLeod in the right circle firing. Bouch saves. A centering pass. It goes to the left side and it's driven down the ice by Fredrickson. And there's 10 seconds remaining in the penalty. Score tied, one all. Last chance on the power play as Zajac comes to center. Falls at the blue line, trying to get around Perpich. The puck back out at center. Micheletti is on, picks up the puck. He's tied up by Anderson. Puts it in the zone. Bolvin comes back in the net. Being hook-checked on the way. It's brought in front. Cleared to the line, held in by Perpich. Controlling a bouncing puck, dumping it in behind the net. Gary Keeger clearing to the left for Pete Anderson. He's checked by Sandlin, but pokes the puck to center. Bowman has it. Feeding to the left side now. Moving in is Greg Hooper. And he's checked in the circle. Now back of the net. Bowman to Greg Hooper in the left corner. Out to the far point to Sandlin. A shot. And it came through a maze of traffic. And Borer managed to make the save. Now it's cleared out to center ice by Anderson, who falls. Shot back in, and it's cleared out by Keeger. Gary Keeger. In comes... Sandlin with a drive to tie off the glass and rebounds to center. Hibbing trying to keep it in the zone, keep the pressure on, but Gary Keeger clearing out rink wide to the left. It's relayed down the ice. Bouch makes an easy save on that long shot by Pete Anderson. Now Mariner holding the puck in the zone, and it deflects out in front where Bouch gloves it at the edge of the crease and forces a stoppage and a face-off to his right with 1.13 remaining in the second period. Well, both goaltenders getting tested a great deal this period. Bohr just had to make two fine saves after Mariner had been in the power play again. And on that last power play, Mariner passing the puck far too much around the outside, Hibbing content to let him play around the other perimeter, and Mariner not able to get any chances. That penalty was killed off rather easily after Mariner had scored on an earlier power play when they got to shooting the puck a lot more. In their 7-2 win over Cloquet last night, Mariner scored four times on the power play and once was shorthanded. Face off to the left of Stanley Bouch. To the blue line. And Gary Keeger's shot is wide to the right, high off the glass, proof firing. He's wide to the left with it. Now it's picked up by Rutar. Cleared and blocked at the Mariner blue line by Keeger, who drives it back into the Hibbing zone. Blue Jackets clear out off the glass to center ice. Keeger rink wides it back into his own for Prue, who comes back. Fires it off the boards. Picked up now by Andrikan. A long pass. Got by Krompetich winding up back of the Mariner goal. It's cleared to the left for Mark Anderson. He's checked by Fredrickson. Long shot right on by Andrikan. The rebound cleared away to the left now by Gary Keeger. This is Fishback trying to come out. Swings by Rutar, pokes the puck to center, relay to the right side for Baker in over the line. His shot goes in the right corner, but it was offside at the blue line, and there are 20 seconds remaining to be played in the second period with the score deadlocked at a goal apiece. It's a very, very physical period, Al. The first period was uh, a little less physical, Hibbing being uh, basically the only one taking the body consistently, but in this period, Mariner using their side, matching him check for check, extremely hard hitting. Puck comes back to the blue line. Randy Keeger lost his balance, but now recovers to clear the puck out of the zone. And now McLeod reaching for it. He fell as he was bumped, knocked off balance. The puck comes in the hitting zone and is picked up and dumped out to center by Sandlin at the horn. And that's the end of the second period with the score hitting one and White Bear one.
Well, Lou, it looks like we could have a repeat of the game that we had earlier. That Edina won in sudden death overtime. Both these teams just as even, and we've got pretty much a similar score, one to one, after two periods of play. That's right, Bob. We were talking about that at the beginning of the game. We'd probably see a light contest, and it certainly seems like it is right now. Down on the ice now is Rob Lear with Tom Simpson, the coach of the White Bear Mariner Dolphins. Rob? Coach, so far your team has been able to neutralize hitting speed with a lot of strength and a lot of uh, bumping and uh, running. Well, it's an even toss-up game. There's no question about it. And uh, we'll go for the third period. It should be one heck of a third period, I'll tell you that. Your kids have been responding under such pressure here, just marvelously so. Well, they've been doing an excellent job all year long, and they've been under pressure uh, ever since basically the beginning of the season. We were picked to win the conference, and it was a dogfight to win that. And then uh, they picked him to uh, take the regionals, and it was a dogfight in there, too. So they've played under pressure before, and they're doing a super job, and I expect them to continue to do it. What do you have in store for the third period? Just the constant work that we're doing right now, and just keep the work going. Best of luck to you. Thanks very much. Bob? The second period, that is the end of the second period with the score, hitting one. White Bear Mariner won. And then I bought a 1977 T-Bird, and we traded that for a 1979 LTD four-door because my wife insisted on having four doors. Then I bought a 1979 Mustang for my second car. 19, I also own now a 1981 LTD Crown Victoria, and I just bought a 1982 Escort, and it's only two days old. What America's looking for, the Northlands found in Ford. There's a hungry kind of feeling, and every day it grows. You know there's so much more to you than anybody knows. Specialist Kevin Crowley is working with tomorrow's technology in the Army's newest tank. The laser determines target range and feeds it to the computer. It's just incredible. This is something new from Wendy's. What is it? Wendy's new taco salad. Looks like a whole meal. What's in it? Crispy lettuce, shredded cheese, juicy tomatoes. Looks so healthy. Crunchy taco chips, all smothered in Wendy's homemade chili. That's Wendy's new taco salad. What's that? Let me tell her. It's got crispy lettuce, shredded cheese. Wendy's ain't no reason to go anyplace else. Farming is a risky business. Careful. You have to carefully consider every move you make. Easy. There are dangers in expanding your operation. Risks in marketing your crop more aggressively. Watch it. A slip could mean disaster. So isn't it comforting to know you have all risk crop insurance with you every step of the way? Back live at the St. Paul Civic Center, Bob Bruce with Lou Nanny. Lou, we have a tie hockey game. White Bear Mariner coming with a power play uh, goal in the second period to tie this game. They had two power play opportunities, really. The first one they capitalized on, but the second one, they, they really couldn't get in at all to even get a shot on goal. That's right. This first one here was a lot of work by Schultz here on the right side. That's him, number 14. He centers it to Parker, to Anderson. Anderson had one shot, Parker got the rebound, Anderson was finally able to put it over a sprawled pouch up on top. Here you see the pass out to Anderson, he takes a shot over to the side, it was going by the net, Parker shoots it, hits the pipe, rebound to Anderson, he put it upstairs. A fine effort by those three, but that's something Mariner didn't do in a other power play. See how they're working in closer to the net, trying to get some shots from the slot area? Well, in the next power play, they were outside, far too much, passing the puck around the side. They really never had any shots. They outshot Mariner, uh, rather Mariner, outshot Hibbing 11 to 6 in that second period. What did they do different in the second period that they didn't do in the first period? Well, they were much more physical. They were knocking Hibbing off the puck, something they weren't doing in the first period. And Hibbing defensemen were very solid and strong in their own zone. The Hibbing forwards are surprising me. They're really using their, for, uh, their bodies extremely well. That's why we've got such a physical game. We could be here real late tonight. <laughs> this could be another overtime. I think we can. It's all tied up after two periods of action. The exciting action of the 1982 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament will continue after station identification. Now you have power.
car back, you told me. It came on about 10 minutes ago. Thank goodness. <laughs> it's been an adventure, kind of fun. We um, had time to play games with the kids, and we sat by the kerosene lantern. And, and listen, I have to say thank you to CCO, because immediately at 9.30 when the power went off, we got our portable radio, and we... Um, turned on CCO and that's been our constant companion and for the weather reports for what to do uh, where to who to call in case of trouble or you know you begin to wonder well am I doing the right thing and then we felt confident that we were doing the right thing so thanks to you guys really I can't tell you how much it meant to hear your voice Germany, home of Volkswagen. What's a Mazda GLC doing here? Making a point about outstanding value in an economy car. Because while the sophisticated GLC offers the performance, economy, and versatility you expect in a front-wheel drive economy car, it offers it at a price you most certainly don't expect. The more you look at some of the finest economy cars in the world, the more you like the 1982 Mazda GLC. Channel 5, KSTP-TV, St. Paul, Minneapolis. We now return to the St. Paul Civic Center Arena and the 1982 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Sunglasses is about as shiny as is stupid. Just to bring some of you up to date, earlier we had a great game. If you just joined us, Edina beat Jefferson 3-2 in sudden death overtime. Wally Chapman scoring the winning goal, so Edina's going to be playing for the championship against two. Well, we don't know yet. We've got one more period of hockey to play between Hibbing and White Bear Mariner. Right now, down by the ice, Bob Utech is standing by with the University of Minnesota Duluth Bulldog coach. Bob? My guest is Gus Hendrickson, the head coach of UMD at Duluth, and we maybe say we hope someday a U.S. national coach. Gus, you see these tournaments every single year. What about this year and the talent? Well, I think uh, that the, uh, the players this year, there's an exceptional amount of uh, outstanding seniors and juniors, and uh, the Mariner team has really surprised me. They're big and strong, and as a group, uh, they might be about a year away from the WCHA. They're, yeah, they're really you good. Had, you had an excellent UMD team this year. You got some favorite players you're going to try to pick out of this tournament? Well, there's a whole lot. You know, I was just talking to a fellow from Sports Illustrated, and he and, and I miss uh, you're going to miss some if you start mentioning them, but the Mariner team has a couple, and Sandal and Micheletti, the Hoopers, are playing right now. And uh, there's really a lot of seniors, and there's a lot of schools going after them, but... You know, this tournament, the aura of it and the excitement, it's just, it's really a lot of fun. And you got your crowd here, your uh, your boosters right here oh, giving yeah. you a good time. But don't you get the idea that there's always a premier list before the tournament. Then you come to the games and you look at two teams and you say to yourself, well, let's just take the best 18, put a college set of uniforms on, we got a good team. You'd have a great team, you really would. I got, you know, you come down and you, you do have a list. Uh, watching Mariner, we put a couple more names on the list and watching another team you get a name here and there so we have to go back now and reevaluate the entire thing uh you know you hear a lot of rumors of where players are going and this and that but i think right now most of them are open there's a few committed uh the next couple of weeks is very critical for a lot of college coaches one of your former players mark pavlich has the new rookie scoring record for the new york rangers and then you got kurt giles right here at the north Shore's great players yeah they are and they're small they're small bob you know it uh, thanks to uh louis nanny and Sonmore that they gave kurt the opportunity to play in the National Hockey League. And Herbie Brooks with Pat. They're excellent players They're right out of right out of college hockey. Okay, Gus Henderson, thank you very much for coming on with us. And now back to Bob Bruce and more of the action. You know, throughout this tournament, the officiating really has been excellent. And I'm sure the gentleman downstairs with Ed Kaor right now is very pleased at that fact. Ed? I'm sure he is because it's always a well-officiated tournament, Bob. And this is John Bartz, who is supervisor of officials for the tournament. And John, uh, as I said earlier, I was a little curious about how officials are chosen to officiate at this tournament. Well, the Minnesota State High School League asks the coaches throughout the state to list those people that they think are qualified to work in this type of a tournament. And then they resubmit that list back to the coaches for them to vote. So actually the coaches within the state are selecting the people on a geographic basis to work the tournament. Then 
even though they're selected, is it coaches vote alone or are they chosen from a group that's kind of uh, called out, say, by the coaches? Probably, yes. The, the group that's uh, selected by the coaches and then, uh, well, like I say, it, it's done basically by geographic area. We take two out of the Northwest, two out of the North, two out of Minneapolis, and two out of St. Paul. So we think it's a select group of people. I, I think they've done an excellent job during this tournament. We'd hope so. We, we realize we have eight people that uh, uh, we're stressing uniformity and consistency, but you have judgment from eight different individuals, and uh, it does pose a problem sometimes. But uh, we'd like to think that we're doing a good job. John Bartz, you certainly are. Thanks very much. Let's go back to Bob Bruce. Thanks, Ed. Just moments away from the third period, this is the 1982 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Stone Wings. More than a restaurant, more than just a night out, Stone Wings is one of life's pleasures. The pride of private ownership is reflected when you arrive to find a reserved table and a friendly staff waiting eagerly to serve you. Now isn't that a better idea than having to wait in line for a table? From the warmth of our lounge through the complete menu of dinner selections to dancing after dinner at a price that won't spoil the night, Stone Wings in Bloomington will help you remember what life was like before franchises. Call us for a reservation. The Bobby Smith Kemp's Ice Cream Hockey Clinic. Puck carrying is probably what I do best. Practice. Learn to handle that puck without looking at it and move it side to side with flexible wrists. When I'm playing well, I feel I can make that puck do just about anything. Come on, let's go. The Bobby Smith Kemp's Ice Cream Hockey Clinic has been brought to you by Kemp's, makers of Kemp's Ice Cream. Look out, look out, look out. Here comes the $750 price break from Ford. Get $750 back on every new Mustang. $750 back on every new Fairmont Futura. $750 back on every new Granada and Granada Wagon. But hurry, you must take delivery between now and April 3rd. It's the $750 price break from Ford. Here comes Ford. Motorcraft reveals the enemy of gas mileage, fuel robbing friction in your engine. Motorcraft introduces the Gas Saver, Motorcraft's new super premium oil. It fights friction so well, it can actually save you gas. New Motorcraft super premium oil. It can save you gas. Motorcraft, for the future of your car, for sure. Motorcraft 10W40 motor oil, 69 cents with rebate at all Kmart stores. St. Paul Civic Center, Bob Bruce along with Lou Nanny and Al Shaver waiting to start of the third period between Hibbing and White Bear Mariner. We're all tied up one to one. Don't forget that tomorrow afternoon we'll be on the air at 12.30 with the Consolation Championship. That game will be immediately followed by the third place game. And then, of course, tomorrow night we'll have the championship finale of this 1982 tournament. Well, gentlemen, looks like a repeat of our earlier game. Definitely a possibility for a sudden death. Well, Bob, you were saying before this game started what a great game we've seen with the Dine and Jefferson. You said, I expect to see the same type game. Well, you're seeing it. There's no doubt about this one that this is as fine a game as we've had, and it was an outstanding one in the first game. We know one thing we're going to be guaranteed of a good champion because the Dine is an outstanding hockey club, and both these teams here tonight are playing superbly, and each of them capable of winning the tournament as is Edina. So we're going to see another fine game tomorrow, whoever comes out of this game. Could be one of the best final games in the tournament in uh, quite some time. Well, it's, it was good to see uh, the, the top caliber teams coming through the kind of performances we expected coming into this tournament. The highly ranked teams coming in, uh, coming through tough seasons and heralded a great deal. And you like to see good teams show their class and show their abilities as they have done. Well, we've got one period of hockey left. And after that period, we'll know who will be playing Edina tomorrow night for the 1982 Minnesota State High School Hockey Championship. With the call of the third period, here's Al Shaver. It'll be Micheletti and Parker. Pat Micheletti and Jeff Parker. They are the same centers who took the opening draw for each of the two.
previous periods. 15 minutes remaining to settle it in regulation time as the puck goes down, and this is Gary Hooper firing it in. Off to the right of the goal, coming back forward is Gary Keeger, clears to the corner, goes after it, then fires it around behind. It got by Prue, but on the left side is picked up by Anderson. He's jammed and tied up now. Parker tried to dig it out, but Anderson is being closely tied up by Greg Hooper. That's Pete Anderson, number 18. His brother Mark wears 17. Face off in the circle to the left of Tim Borer. Very pensive Tom Simpson, Coach Amara, looking on. The only relation to Bullet Joe Simpson. <laughs> From the face off the puck in the slot, Hooper wheels and deals. He's wide to the left. A shot by Greg Hooper. Now Micheletti chasing the puck, but it's cleared by Prue around to the right side. Comes back to the point now, and a shot by Perpage. Holds the puck into the zone. On the left side, Pete Anderson again. He's checked by Hooper. Micheletti hoping it'll come loose, but it doesn't, and they tie it up. They'll face off to the left of Border. 37 seconds into the final period. There's a break in the action with the score. White Bear 1 and Hibbing 1. This Minnesota State High School hockey tournament is brought to you in part by Northwestern Bell, who reminds you, you can save money by direct dialing your long-distance calls. Coach George Perpich yelling a little instructions to his players. From the faceoff, back to Fredrickson, feeds the left point, and the shot goes up high from the point man, Hanson. It's in the left corner now. It's Cleared out to center ice. Blocked there by Andrikan. Plays it in on the left side. Rutar tried to center it, but Bridges blocked it. Bridges and Rutar. Now this is Bridges coming with the puck behind the net. Chased out to the left. Rutar staying with him. Now he gets by another check and comes to center. Feeds off on the play. Fishback lost it at the blue line and then falls. And back comes Hansen playing it into the zone, but he couldn't catch up to it. Now he's trying to steal it away, but it's cleared on out to center ice. And... Comes right back into Randy Keeger after he cleared it. A shot hit the board. That's score! The second came off the boards right in front, and Baker was there to knock it in. It almost went in off Bouch. The first shot went wide, hit the boards, came back past Bouch. He didn't know where it was, and in came Baker to knock it home. Well, Ke Keeger's shot actually went to the outside of Bouch, he looked the wrong way and when you turn your back at a puck you don't know where it's coming out he turns there you see the shot being made by baker on the goal that's after the rebound came off those glass so quickly as we were seeing the glass is very lively and the puck just jumps off there here's Bouch turning one way the puck coming through his leg by the time he sets himself baker had rammed it home back to live action another shot Bouch turns this aside mariner leading it now by a score of two to one a long shot from the point by bruin comes right in front here's a backhand shot save is made rebound chance mcleod is stopped it's still in front finally it's poked away to the left zane jack tied up as he goes after it now it's controlled along the boards and fed to bobin by kemp bobin at center drives it down the ice and it's steered away to the left by borer Puck is in the Mariners zone, cleared and bounces to the line, held in by Sandlin and the Bowman right in front, and it was offside. They played 2 all 3 of the third period. There's a break in the action. The score is White Bear Mariner 2, and the Hibbing Blue Jackets 1. The Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament is brought to you in part by Micron Skates and these fine dealers. Stop in and see what makes Micron great. Face off outside the Mariner blue line. Prue now trying to clear, but it comes back in the zone. Krampetic tried to center. It's blocked by Prue. And now it's picked up. Mark Anderson coming out. A long pass on the right side as they come in with McLeod to the left corner. Forced back of the goal. Still controlling. Now he's checked along the boards. Continues to press for the puck, however. Battling to hold it in the zone. McLeod using his body well along the boards as he's bumping. And finally, they freeze it. Hanson and McLeod doing some shoving, and we've got players down on the ice. Bucky Holton coming up off the bottom, a pair of 13s down there, Holton along with Krampetic. And that was Don Baker yelling at his teammates. He's just scored to put him ahead. He's yelling some encouragement. The Mariner Hockey Club somewhat fired up after scoring that goal. 
Face off to the right of Bouch. The hibbing goaltender, Parker, tried to get a shot off. Now he's given a good jolt of the play by Sandlin. A pass in the slot to flex off the skate and comes back in the neutral zone. Bridges back. Over to Randy Teeger. Dumps it back in. Perpich coming back for it. Behind the net now to the right side. Banking a pass off the boards. Tipped ahead by Micheletti, but it goes out of play, and they'll face it off back in the hibbing zone. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. This is... KSTV-TV, St. Paul, Minneapolis, Channel 5. Two to one, White Bear with 12-11 remaining. Play underway at center. Bridges tied up. Falls. Along with Greg Hooper. Now the puck picked up in the neutral zone. Teeger goes down as he was bumped on the play by Sandlin. The puck fired around behind Perpich, unable to get it. A shot from the wing, hit the traffic in the slot. Now Teeger firing, blocked and bounced. Bats it away with a stick into the right corner. Now coming up with the puck is Micheletti. Micheletti and the Hoopers attacking over the line. Drop pass, Gary Hooper firing and hit the defender, Teeger. Blocked by Randy Teeger, the puck cleared to center ice. Head ahead by Hanson. Here's another goal for Micheletti moving and played it by one man too far to catch up to it. And it's steered away to the left corner by Borer. Along the near boards, it's tied up and we will, no, they're keeping it in play. Parker loses to Micheletti, chases it back of the net. Bridges falls, Hooper puts it out in front. It got by Greg Hooper, a shot from the point. It's blocked, another try from the point by Hanson is blocked and out come the Mariners. It's dumped into the hibbing zone by Parker. And now picked up on the right side and fed to center by Andrika. And this is Micheletti losing it to Bridges inside the Mariner blue line. Bridges clearing rink wide off the boards to center. It took a bad bounce for Hanson. Here's a chance. Mark Anderson poking at it. Lou Bucket goes! way out deflecting the puck but not away from the net. And Mark Anderson swung past him and knocked it home to make it 3-1 to one for White Bear. That long reach by Mark Anderson enabled him just to tip it right over Bouch. Bouch coming out of the net, feeling he could beat Anderson to the puck. Just had it poked right over his shoulder, and as it came down, you'll see him here. He's just going to reach and poke it over him, and it comes down right near the crease, and he just bats it home before he can be taken out of the play. Mark Anderson, a great second effort. A little push of that puck, so it deflects up over his goal stick. And now it comes down, and it just rammed home. A big goal for Mariner. And a fine effort right there by Mark Anderson. Bouch turning around, not knowing where it is, and it finally goes down. The puck is knocked in the net. Mariner leading 3-1 to one with 10.44 to go. 4.16, the time of the goal. And I was just going to say, Al, before that goal happened, there was three or four real hard checks thrown. Clean checks. They're not called. I think the officials are just doing an outstanding job here in this game. They're letting these kids play, and they're playing with a great deal of intensity. Three to one, Mariner. The puck back in the hibbing zone. Perpich on a pass from Sandlin. Feeds center. It's off the mark, and it's shot back in by Mariner. Back in the right corner, Sandlin. Around behind for Perpich. Works at Pi Anderson, playing it to the near boards. Fredrickson overskated it. Now falls as he's checked by Fishback. Gets up, ties up Fishback, and the puck is cleared to center ice by Krampetich. In over the line, Rutar with a shot. Blocked by the goaltender and steered away to the right side. And it's frozen to the boards as Krampetich is tied up along the boards. We'll have a faceoff to the right of Borer. There's a break in the action with the score. White Bear three and Hibbing one. Win a one-week vacation for two anywhere under the sun. Tell us where in the world you'd like to go. Listen to KS95 FM. You see a lot of the White Bear fans here trying to get their hockey club going at the same pace as they've been going. On the faceoff, Bridges coming back of the net. Now feeding a pass off a stick. It comes out over the blue line and is shot back in offside by Andrikan. 10.02 left to play. 3-1 Mariner with a faceoff outside the Mariner blue line. A concerned George Purpose looking around, wondering who he's going to put out next. Yelling at his players, trying to fire him up.
From the face off, the puck into the neutral zone. Hibbing in control. Now it's shot in by Girardi, promptly cleared back out. And now Andrick in a long shot that's blocked by Borer. Sweeps it away to his left, and Bridges has it behind the net. Bridges trying the right side. Now headbanding straight up the middle. Zajac sliding a pass to his right. McLeod a shot. Blocking pad save. And it's cleared by Bobin on the left side. This is Girardi at center now. At the blue line, broken up. Bobin plays it in, but Girardi is trapped on the offside. 5.32, gone. 9.28 remaining in the third period. There's a break in the action with the score. White Bear 3 and Hibbing 1. Experience one of life's pleasures, an evening at Stonewings. The personal touch is our goal. Make a reservation and let us serve you. Stonewings, Bloomington. Puck back out to Sender. Sandalin driving it in. Prue coming back to the left of Borer for it. Clearing around behind on the right side. Perpich failed to hold it in. Here's a two-on-one against Sandalin as they move in. Mark Anderson right in front. He shot it wide. That was Pete Anderson back in the slot. Another shot goes wide. It's centered out in front. Parker putting it from the door. Schultz makes it four to one for Mariner. How many chances does one man get? After some great play by Parker and Anderson, Schultz finally put that one in. Jeff Parker doing a great job around the net, carrying that puck down the ice, feeding it over to Anderson right here. Anderson missing a shot. Puck going to Parker. Parker centering it to Schultz. Schultz missing one shot. Parker back out to Schultz. Schultz finally putting that thing away. Put Mariner up 4-1. to one. Jeff Parker, two great passes. One finally resulting in the goal. Greg Schultz at 5.57. And Hibbing now have their backs to the wall. Here's a fine pass by Parker on the initial try. Anderson having it just missed the net. Now they puck shot into the White Bear zone. Prue coming back to the net to the left side. He's tied up. Fredrickson trying to center. Parker clearing to the right. And here comes Schultz again at center. He skated off into the boards hard on a check there by Rutar, but gets the puck back. Puts it in front of the net. It goes off a skate. Comes back to the blue line and out with Prue shooting it in offside. Now, one thing we didn't see on that goal coming up the ice, oh, we'll talk about it. We're going to take this away. Okay, there's a break in the action, and the score, White Bear 4 and hitting 1. The Minnesota State Hockey Tournament is brought to you by your nearby Northland Ford dealer. Stop in and see his class of 82, EXP Escort Mustang and the new Mustang GT.